Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Red. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. But anyhow, before we get started, before we get started, um, I want to say this. Apparently, it's Brother May's birthday. So, as I do whenever I find out it's somebody's birthday, I make sure to let them know happy birthday. So, therefore, happy birthday to May. Happy birthday to May Wood. Happy birthday, dear May Wood. Happy birthday to you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, my brother. Thank you for being here on Politics Done Right Live. And for those who are listening on podcasts, if you come live and it's your birthday, I get to sing to you with whatever I have left of my voice. You know, the voice kind of degrades with age, but who knows? Who knows? Anyway, we're going to have a great show for you guys today. Ha, welcome aboard. Bridge MCP from Binghamton, New York is in the house. We also have May Wood from Long Beach, California. AVQ, Senor Rodnan from Brooklyn, New York. And where are all of the rest of my peeps? I know you're here. I see the numbers on the hidden ones. Mado was great. Unfortunately, we couldn't record, but they are going to be playing it at the Progressive Forum on the 27th. So what I'll do on the 27th is I will get the pertinent outtakes. Uh, I'll get the pertinent outtakes and bring some of that to you guys whenever I, you know, whenever they release that. And I'll make it a part of the program because she was very enlightening. What I like in one of the answers she gave, it was sort of a Obanesque. Obamanesque answer, which it was saying, don't be scared, don't be fearful, go out there and get the job done. In other words, she looked and I mean, she, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you are looking, uh, following her podcast, Ultra. I've been listening to her podcast about 10 at midnight, listening to that, uh, you know, because again, it's a very good podcast and it shows you how fascism came into be or came close to being in this country several times before. So her ultra podcast is great. If you're on, if you're not on Spotify, you have to do, watch it as she released them one at a time. However, if you are on Spotify, you can list, listen to them one right after the other. It's, at least that's what I'm noticing so far. I think I'm on the third episode right now. Uh, Michael Radin says, one of Maddo's tagline in response to fascist threats is, don't give up in advance. Exactly. That's pretty much her message yesterday. She, the way she started it is she read the book, uh, a chapter in her book that showed what type of person uh, Ford, uh, uh, Ford, the, 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 the owner of Ford Motor Corporation, how anti-Semitic, how racist he was. And she read some things that I, I heard her mention it on her show before. But, you know, we revere all these plutocrats, all these industrialists as, as if these were good people. They weren't. They were not good people. And she really pointed out the evil of, the for, uh, of what Ford represented. And not only that, a, a little known fact is that Adolf Hitler's hero was actually Henry Ford. Think about that. His hero plastered on the back wall in his office was Henry Ford. Henry Ford, I think it's Henry Ford. Well, whatever the, the Ford, um, the owner, the guy who created Ford um, Motors were. And a, a lot of his ideas, and the idea was blame somebody else. Blame someone. Have somebody to blame for all the evils, for all the troubles. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we have to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's in, and by the way, all of us who got, remember I told you a friend of mine, uh, the Pontons bought me these tickets to go and they're, uh, everybody who got there got a, a book, her, her, her book called Prequel. The truth of the matter is, this is a big book. I rather read it online. It's about 300, let's see. She has so many footnotes. The book is 300 and that's a bibliography. I want to get past the bibliography, tell you how many things you have to read. The book is about 
324 that you have to read if you don't count the acknowledgments and other things. It's a big book. It's a nice book. This one is a hard copy, but it was it was a very, very good showing. Uh, there were 1,600 plus people last night to listen to her at a synagogue. And the synagogue, of course, was very, very well protected. I want to, before we get started also, I want to read the data that Brother E2247 has. I told him I would read it today. He, I think he sort of accused me of not following up yesterday. And I hope you understand that I try to give everybody their, their due. Got a, quite a few people in the chat. All right, so let's go ahead and read Brother E2247's uh, piece, which is very important. It says, three uh, wounded persons... Uh, let me make sure I get to the start. Hey, there we go. The start is here. Uh, uh, let's see. I want to get to the start of what he did. Uh, let's see. Day 252 since 7th of October, at least 37,266 Palestinians killed, 465 persons more than day 245, at least 85,102 wounded, 1422 persons more than day 245. 122,368 casualties. 128,368 casualties equal 485 per day of the estimated 5,385,012 of West Bank and Gaza Palestinian population with 37,266 Palestinian killed. That is equal to 148 per day killed. 38% are kids and women, at least, brother, at least. Don't forget, there's a lot of folks under those rubbles. Were U.S. to be in the situation of Palestine now 252 days into genocide by Israel, U.S. has proportionally killed and injured total 7,648,533 of the U.S. population. That would be the equivalent. Uh, 8.29 months into it, the war is no longer about Hamas, but it's clearly a U.S.-U.K.-Israel war on Palestine, river to the sea. 37,266 Palestinians are killed. 38% are kids and children. We get it. We get it. Uh, Michael Radin, thank you for that, uh, brother, brother E2247. Henry Ford had one good idea, according to Michael Radin. Pay your employees well enough to afford the stuff they're manufacturing. But Henry Ford has a lot of horrible quotes. But think about that. Even that, even though it's good, pay your employee enough. He wants to pay them enough so they could afford to buy his car. Think about that. It's not even pay them enough because look at what you just said, brother. You said pay your employees all enough to afford the stuff they're manufacturing. But it should be pay enough so that they could live a comfortable life. But they're paying enough so they'll buy the products that we sell. Think about that. That also is self-serving and selfish, right? In other words, he's just paying them enough so that they will be able to buy the stuff he sells. Oh, wow. So even that came with a little thing. Yeah, uh, Bridge, he wasn't a good person at all. Welcome, Paul Fleming. Paul Fleming is from Georgia. And what was it? New Powder, Georgia? Uh, <laughs> I forgot the, the name that you gave us. You did give us. The new, the new town that you're in. Uh, I want to say, whatever, I'll, you'll tell me. This bump stock ruling by the Supreme Court is a clear, blatant threat to the American people and an F you to the families of the victims of gun violence. Yes, it is. Carl Cox says Henry Ford hated union organizers and had goons beat up workers who struck for a better wage condition. Eric says Morning Joe news reporters worth millions. Uh, who one of their sponsors is Starbucks, bash capitalism, and have anti-capitalist people on or trying to tell people they don't live? Hypocrisy and incompetence on story and do not live what they preach. With, with all those uh, sentences, my brother, I think you just don't get it. We're not against people becoming millionaires or getting rich. We're against Powder Springs. I remember it had powder. Powder Springs. Thank you, brother. Powder Springs, Georgia is where Paul Fleming is from. Carl Cox is from Georgia. And, whoa, I got to, you know, I, I have to repeat it several times before I get all these cities right. All right. But uh, you just don't get it. But, again, enough people are going to get it to make a difference in November. So uh, I will just, for the short term, disregard it.
All right. I have a, a rant that I did this morning at KPFT about the Supreme Court. I think the Supreme Court is a clear and present danger. It is something that Brother Fleming just alluded to. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and play my rant. I just processed it a few seconds ago and I got to load it up and I hope I hope the process went clean enough that it'll play just fine. So I'm about to pull that up out of my PDR files. And as soon as I pull it up, we are going to go ahead and get it started because it is amazing, this stuff about the bump stocks, but we will talk about it. I hope somebody call about it, but we'll see what happens. Let's see. Bump stocks, Scottish unions, and Starbucks. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do that right this minute. I want to start with the union, though. Jack, I want to start with where Jack started. And the reason why it is important, because this is where we got Supreme Court involvement. Look, uh, corporations are not a democracy. It is an entity that has great power in controlling employment, meaning employing people or not. Uh, also, they, they pretty much have our economy rigged. They control it. A few corporations have control over the economy. And as such, we have to make sure that there are laws that protect us, we, the citizens. In a country as we have it, we have the, the Congress that creates you know, different laws, and we have boards, we have agencies that interpret those laws or execute those laws, of course, under the executive, and of which the NLRB is one, the, the Labor Relations Board. When uh, we want to have unions, I mean, like we mentioned before, corporations are powerful and they have the freedom to do what they want. It's not a democracy. They can hire and fire at will. And we created some subjugate structures like unions. And unions are employees getting together so that they can speak with one voice to this powerful entity called a corporation or any job, etc. It's it's something that provides balance. In other words, the the the, the corporations and their and the different organizations that they form the different you know metallurgical this or the uh uh the late chamber of commerce they fight for the rights of a corporation they fight for uh the corporate interest and the corporate interest is not always in the interest of the employee that those which work those people who work for the corporation so uh unions are formed so that the average citizen, the average employee will have a voice that must be listened to or else. Now, there are many ways to control that, right? Uh, you can actually, uh, cre co corporations can coerce illegally. And why is it illegal? Because Congress has said unions uh, have rights. Uh, in other words, they have the right, and there are certain things that corporations with the power that they have cannot stop the create the creation of unions. They they have certain rules they have to follow to ensure that we get humane interaction between un between union and corporation between corporation and employee. So now the the the, the unions are starting to grow up again. They're starting to assert their will. They're starting to uh, uh, to go, go beyond the coercion of the corporations. And Starbucks is a very good example. I love my Starbucks coffee, not because of the coffee taste, but because of the ambiance. I go in there, I meet people and so forth. So they create a, uh, there's an environment we have created in these coffee shops, whether it's Starbucks or whether it's uh, others. And these Folks, and by the way, Starbucks, let me just give Starbucks used to be a very employee centric company. They did very, they did right by their employees. 
But as usual, after a while, you know, Starbucks is one of those companies that can make a whole lot of money doing very little. I mean, making a cup of coffee, which is mostly water, and putting some a few fancy drops in it, and it becomes a from a drink that costs Starbucks fifteen cents, including you know, it, it suddenly is worth five bucks, seven bucks. So when we tell folks to support <laughs> these uh, radio station, uh, you know, say so, hey, buy a cup of coffee a month, you know. Anyway, but it costs very. Uh, much for the coffee and you would want that excess. The reason many of us are willing to spend, I imagine all of you out there are willing to spend some money on these expensive coffees is to add to our economy, ensure that you have people there making an extra dollar, making money to take, go home and take care of their kids to get a better education, all that kind of stuff. Well, as Starbucks started to make more money, more shareholders, it got lucrative. And as these companies get lucrative, what happens is, as you know, everybody wants a certain return on their investment, right? Because that's how we were programmed. We think of two things, return on investment and whatever you get in dividends. So a lot of these folks, are not they don't suffice with getting a constant dividend. Let's say a 1% or 2% dividend on the stock that you buy, you know, for sitting down at your pool or whatever. As this money makes money for you, you know, a little bit of interest is good, but no, they want constant growth in the company because if a company is constantly growing its share of, of the money they're co- it's collecting, there's not only the dividend that the company pays, but there's something magical that happens called the appreciation of the stock which people get rich off and which they pay lower taxes on appreciation versus dividend. So that's what Starbucks says and all these corporations try to do. Maximize the amount, uh, the value of the stocks so that their shareholders make more money, the executives make more money. But the only way to do that after you've, you've maximized the amount of money, you uh, minimize the amount of money you pay for your raw su- uh, supplies, whether that be coffee, cocoa, and all these other uh, paper, whatever you need to keep, to keep that company going. The only other option is to short change the employee, which is what they always do. Short change the employee. So things didn't stay 100% great for the Starbucks employee as it was a good place before. So they started to unionize. And there are many Starbucks stores that are unionized. Starbucks didn't like that. And so whenever they find people in the, in the store that started to try to create a union, they fired them. And that's what they did in this case. They fired seven people. I don't remember what store. And, uh, This is how the Supreme Court message started. It says, after several Starbucks employees announced plans to unionize, they invited a a news crew from a local television station to visit the store after hours to promote their unionizing efforts. Starbucks fired multiple employees involved with the media event for violating company policy. The The National Labor Relations Board filed an administrative complaint against Starbucks, alleging that it had engaged in unfair labor practices. The board's regional director then filed a petition under 10J of the National Labor Relations Act seeking a preliminary injunction for the duration of the administrative proceedings that would, among other things, require Starbucks to reinstate fired employees. Now, they, they, the uh, Starbucks, again, filed a complaint to get to the Supreme Court. And yesterday, the Supreme Court, by an eight to one decision, Two of the progressives, again, that just shows you how powerful business is. Two of the progressives on the court supported only Katanji Brown voted to say, no, we need to support employees in all cases, employees in all cases. Katanji Brown understands the power of the corporation. She understands the weakness that if you don't put checks and balances on a corporation, that the corporations will do whatever it takes to ensure they crush 
the union movement. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons you see in the aggregate, Republicans fight so hard to, to, to appoint people to the courts is because they understand that that is the only undemocratic portion after in, in it, after instantiated after a dr- a judge has been placed on the bench democracy ends their statements are absolute i did a piece at kpft a few years ago trying to explain why it is that we must be very careful in elections of the people who will who will get supreme court judges appointed because Well, I'll let the video speak for itself. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. It's a short video, but a very important video about the Supreme Court, about our country, about the separate, about the separation of branches and the powers of branches. Check this out. That piece that I played on the Constitution, when we talk about the merits of the Constitution, what I wanted to do with that argument about the Constitution and what Trump via McConnell is doing with the Supreme Court, with the district courts, with the circuit courts, is to explain something important to you. It's not enough for us to go out there and just say we want to win the presidency or we want to win this Congress seat or anything. We have to change the mold of the country, the psyche of the country, because there's so much that they know that most people don't. Like when McConnell is playing with the Supreme Court and playing with the district court and playing with the circuit court, a lot of people sit back and they don't think it has much impact on them. We are trying to establish a more perfect union. We are trying to establish a system that works for everybody, which means we no longer allow a plutocracy to take it all. But you know what? The American population is wising up, but they're already preparing for a wise population and they're using the constitution to prepare for that wise population how so everybody who studied their government classes understand there's a judiciary a legislative and a uh, executive the legislative makes the laws the uh, executive executes the laws and the judiciary interprets the law's constitutionality well if we are going to win all these new elections and we are going to win the presidency the only help the plutocracy could possibly have is the only undemocratic portion of the American system that was designed constitutionally, and that is the judiciary. The judiciary can take any piece of law that the legislative branch passes and the executive branch affirms and say a corporation who now owns all these judges can now say, well, that law is unconstitutional and it then cannot be implemented. We already have gerrymandering that has made the country a country that's not ruled by most. California has probably 40 million people or more, however million they have. And someone at the Dakotas have a few hundred thousand and both of them get two senators. Wow, that's a lot of power for a little bit of people. And now the Supreme Court is preeminent. The Supreme Court is is undeniably the most powerful branch of the government. And a lot of people don't tell you that. They always talk about, oh, we have this, this, every, the checks and balances. There ain't no check against the Supreme Court unless we're going to then implement the difficult thing of call that's called impeachment. But constitutionally, you can only impeach judges with either three fifths or three fourths. Three, I don't remember the number, which means you have to have a hell of a super majority in Congress to do what you have to do. So folks, the way they intend to destroy the Roman intelligent middle class is to do the constitutionally undemocratic thing, and that is to use the courts. And that is what we have to understand. That is a play. That is the game. That is what they intend to do. And this ruling against uh, Starbucks is a is a perfect example. It's a perfect example that says we can now understand that the masses don't stand a chance with the wrong Supreme Court judges. And we will get wrong Supreme Court judges if we create the wrong presidency. Uh, you, you already see most women want support for their, uh, they want to ensure they can have control of their, their own bodies. The Supreme Court says no. 
yesterday, a lot of people thought we got a win because uh, you can use the Metro, whatever the name of the, the, the abortion drug is. But that's not what the ruling was. The ruling simply said, you guys who brought this to us have no standing. Somebody else with standing can bring it to us. So swinging that right back to Starbucks, swinging that right back to the power of the people. Understand what our plutocracy has done. Understand what was already pointed out in the Powell memo. This memo created by uh, former justice, or not former justice, but former lawyer for this Chamber of Commerce, uh, Lewis Powell, and then subsequently a Supreme Court justice pointed out, we have to get people dumber. Read the Powell memo. You can read it at my site. Read the Powell memo. I'm just paraphrasing. It says we need to make the American population dumb. They're getting too smart. And then it says, how do we go ahead and implement this? We infiltrate the churches, the media, the schools, and everywhere else. And after doing that, we control their minds. And in that way, business remain preeminent. Remember what I tell you guys. You don't have to listen to me and just believe the words that I'm shooting out of my mouth. Everything that I said is verifiable. I ask you kindly, if you want to see what the Powell memo says. Now, I just paraphrased the Powell memo. It's a fairly long document that is easy to read. And you can read between the lines when I talk about why they want to ensure they control your mind, which are, they're so far doing a pretty damn good job of it. Can I, I just go ahead and uh, you can search at uh, for Powell memo and read the entire thing. So again, before I go to the calls, we have a lot of work to do. Yesterday uh, with Rachel, uh, you know, going to watch Rachel Maddow, she didn't take any questions or met with the public. It was a fly in and fly out kind of a deal. Uh, but her message was prescient. And that is was, this is your country. Fight for your country. Don't sit down and feel like you need to be in the doldrums. Get up and fight for your country. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely so folks, join. Anyway, uh, think about it. Anyway, give me a call, 281-823-7747. Again, the number is 281-823-7747. I included, uh, I included the link in there that says, uh, para ver, para ver. Let me back up. I think I just got a direct message from somebody who said he sent me a video, but I never got the video, but he said he wants to be interviewed. Will you interview me so we can address many false claims in your video? Of course, you can call us right now. Call right. Let me tell him. Call right now. And that number is uh, 281. Uh, 281. 823. Seven seven four seven. Ah, uh, you'll be live on air. You will be live. Okay. So yeah, I've just told him. All right. Somebody. He he says he wants to go ahead and counter what I'm saying. There you are. Give us a call. Two eight one eight two three seven seven four seven. I'll be more than happy to entertain you or uh, answer your questions or have you comment right here in front of our entire audience. It's so not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. So there's a number. You think that you that I'm saying something wrong? Give us a call. 281-823-7747. I think his name, the person that just uh, got to me or tweeted me or texts me, or I think he says, Eric Bonomo, call right now. Go to the bathroom. Take a bathroom break. Give us a call. Work is not, I mean, 
if you can't do that, if you can't find a, a 15 minute slot or a 10 minute slot to talk to us right now, it proves my point about the plutocracy enslaving you. Remember I said that the employment has become what we can only call an enslavement engine. Because if you can listen to me right now on the job, you can say, hey, boss, I need a little break. I need to go take care of something. Otherwise, you're a slave. And that's what our corporations have done to us all. Anyway, continuing, my brothers, continuing, continuing, continuing. Um, the, the Powell memo, I wrote this whole article. Let me put it on the screen. I wrote this entire article back in 2013. I'm at this a long time. I think I 2012 is when I left. I think 2012 was when I left uh, Willie's computer software, when I gave up my company or started to give up my company to do this full time. And I wrote this article that went viral. Republican successful assault on the American fabric started with him. And I don't know, you guys won't realize it. That was a Democrat. Lewis Powell was a Democrat. So that the parties mean nothing. It's all about policy and what folks are doing today. We have in the house, Billy Allison Irwin. Welcome again, my beautiful lady uh, that just came and joined us. And I think I saw Lee Grant that just came in since I saluted everybody. Uh, welcome. And I think Eric Hayes just came in as well or recently. I uh, just want to make sure I salute those that I can scroll down and see. Alison, Alizarin Dreams, welcome aboard as well. Thank you for being here. And Carl Cox, welcome for being here. I think I got all the rest in already. Uh, I like something that 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 um, that uh, Paul says. Paul Fleming said something very important. Thank you very much for being a new subscriber, my dear brother. I am a new subscriber. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you, Eric Buonomo. You're now a part of the family. Barbara Wiltz, hi. Thank you for being here, my dear, beautiful Barbara. Um, look, here's what's important. Here's what's important. We all have to get together and change the system. Uh, a lot of what's happening today, while we are at each other's throat, is by design. And I, many of you have heard this before, but there are many who don't quite that are new. We have a whole lot of new people in that I want to reiterate this. I don't care what part of the spectrum you fall in ideologically. The bell, it, we, we don't follow the bell curve for, for our needs. The bell curve, it says that, you know, uh, I guess a certain percentile occurs right here, I think within the 2020 or 1010, uh, somewhere within there. But that's not reality for humanity, for Americans, for how we live. The vast majority of the things that we want fall within a wide, I mean, the amount of people that want the same things is a very wide spectrum. The bottom 10% and the top 10% may be the exceptions, but I wouldn't even put it that, I would put it even wider than that. Okay, but, but I digress. The only way for us to have an economic system like we have today, the only way it survives, because it's an unjust, it's a corrupt, and it's an evil economic system. We have learned not to see it that way. We have learned to normalize all the evils that, that, it, that makes it, right? The, that make it. And in, norm in normalizing that evil, we don't see the harm that it does to others, to us or ourselves. We don't see that. Because if you're indoctrinated from birth, like I was, like most of us in Western countries were, if you're indoctrinated from birth, what happens is that what's normalized is different. Let, let me digress and go to Trump. Trump is a convicted felon. Trump has been doing bad things for a long time. It didn't start when he started running for president, but when he started running for president, he started a certain kind of a normalization of things that then people didn't see it as being strange anymore. They be it, see it as being idiosyncratic or, or just strange, but it's been normalized. Obama, Clinton, 
Reagan, Bush, none of them would have become president with the kind of bad deeds done by Donald Trump. And notice I use Democrats and Republicans alike. None of them would have done it. But Trump came in and normalized, demeaned, brought down what it meant to be president of the United States, demeaned what it was meant to serve in the United States. And in doing so, he opened the door for a lot of deviants to come into the political process. And these deviants that came into the political process, and I'm not talking about the rank and file Republican or rank and file Democrat or rank and file, any of these folks, right? I'm talking about people that knowingly mislead our brothers and sisters in all ideologies on, on the spectrum. These people like Marjorie Taylor, Donald Trump, uh, the, the senator from Oklahoma, um, can't remember his name right now. They came into the fold and they corrupt us. They made sure uh, that we fight each other. Okay, they make sure that we fight each other because if we're fighting each other, you know what we're not doing? We're not doing any kind of critical thinking. If we fight each other, we don't realize that we all put on our pants the same way. If we're fighting each other, we don't realize that we suffer the same pains, that we we all love our families, that we don't want bad things happening to our people, etc. We find that out. If we're not if we're fighting each other, we don't realize that we are not able to empathize with the other. We allow the otherness of someone else, the difference in size, the difference in pigmentation, and all these things to have an in Langford exactly. That's the guy from Oklahoma, uh, and and the one from also the one from Arkansas, which is the one that is even more crazy. So what we do is in otherizing others, we, don't, we, we, we lose the process or the ability to empathize. Empathize means I, can't, I can never be a woman, but I can empathize with women. Uh, Brother uh, Lee Grant can never be a black man. But he should be able to empathize with the things that a black man has to go through based on our history and based on police officers. But if they are authorized, suddenly he sees things through Tom Cotton, exactly from Arkansas. He sees things through the tunnel vision and all the other things that would frame his vision that makes his vision more flexible are no longer there. And that's what Donald Trump and others have allowed to occur. The authorization, the reduction of your uh, uh, not being able to empathize. Your, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a special word that one uses uh, when you're sort of immune to it. You're so used to it. It's normalized that behavior. One of the things that I do know is that empathy can be regained by everybody. And it takes a few steps, right? Because at the times that I was a homophobe, I didn't mind calling out, ah, get away, you, you know what, the epithet or whatever. And it was normal. But now, if I hear that, it's jarring to me. It's like, oh, wow. So I grew an empathy. Yes, I know about the Sinclair script in uh, Paul Fleming. Thank you for bringing the article. So a lot of folks look at all of when we're trying to build this big mosaic. They will say, why bother? Why try to talk to, let's say, an, an Eric who just seem immutable? Well, because we have different levels of uh, empathetic change, right? For me, it was automatic. 
All somebody had to do is give me the logic. As an engineer, I knew I was wrong right away. The first time that somebody pointed out in an intelligent fashion that I was wrong, I would, I, because of my, the way my brain worked, the critical uh, thinking nature of my brain, the, the mechanical thinking, the engineering that I'm trained in, it was easy, even though the heart wasn't changed, the mind was changed immediately. And then the heart learned from the mind that it had to change. Of course, we're talking about, it's not that no heart, it's a different part of your brain that things uh, change, right? The different makeup of the brain that things change. So what I'm saying here, folks, is uh, for us to make this change from Supreme Court all the way down, it's not going to be something that we do overnight. It's not going to be something that gets done at this election. Now, what this election could do is set us back. In other words, if Trump comes in and we know all the people that, that would be coming in with him, he'll set us back. If Biden comes in, some people think it's just a sta uh, standing in, in, in space or, or, or marching in space. No. Biden has proven not to be immutable. Biden has proven that you, he can be pushed. He's willing to be pushed. That's how you got the kind of stimuli that we got that actually prevented this economy from ever going into a, a recession and instead had a soft landing, as I, as I reported yesterday uh, from the story that we did from uh, MSNBC. Yeah, I know that the, the non-thinkers, the people who can't critically think, they're going to repeat the right wing spin. But the rest of the world knows it. The numbers say it. While we have a defect in our economy, while our economy is, a, is terrible for upward mobility of the most, it is actually the best capitalist economy functioning right now in the entire world. I mean, it's not a good thing, but, it, but we have to change it. We need to make some major, major structural changes to this economy so that it supports us all. Okay? So uh, the, the previous piece was on, on the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court being a clear and present danger. I urge you to read my article. This is an old, old article, over 11 years old, and it's still valid today. I am putting the link in there again. It's called, uh, it, it is still there. It is very, very relevant still today. So um, title is Republican Successful Assault on the American Fabric Started with Him, Lewis Powell. <laughs> so what you, can, you could actually transpose some words and say, the Republican successful assault on the American fabric started with a Democrat named Lewis Powell. Okay. Now, it is important for us to understand the dangers. We saw what they did with the unions yesterday. And unfortunately, Kagan and uh, Sotomayor also fell for the doozy. They try to make it look like, well, we are not. As we, the only reason we're voting with the majority on this one is, of course, because we're talking about mechanics. Ketanji Brown didn't fall for the okie doke. She knew exactly what was going on. This was just a play to take power away from the worker. And Sotomayor and Kagan fell right into the trap. But we'll leave that one alone. A uh, bridge MCP said, Egberto, so strange. European, Europeans know more about our government than most Americans. I know. Uh, you know, it, it's a shame, but it's by design. Powell Memo explains why. They took civics out of the school for a purpose. They take all these, they, they, take, they want to take certain books out of the school for a purpose. They want to take critical thinking out of schools for a purpose. Okay? Paul Fleming says, yes, homes flooded and businesses closed, but South Florida latest epic storm without washout may not have caused enough damage to merit a federal emergency declaration. 
Governor Ron DeSantis said, Ron DeSantis is a clown. Uh, we all know that. Michael Rennes says, Bridge might be because our politics affects the world more than it does our citizens. Well, you know, uh, when... <laughs> I don't want to use the word again, but when your mind, too many of our minds are enslaved. That's what it is, my, Michael Rutnin. Uh, I and, and by the way, it's not only folks on the right. It's not only folks on the right. It's folks on the left, too. When I speak about capitalism and the, and the major changes that we have to make on daily coast, the people that push back the hardest are uh, people who purport themselves to be Democrats on daily coast. So, what we have to do is break from the polarization and start going in with the commonality. That is what we have to do. Anyway, folks, the phones are open for anybody who wants to call in. I want to talk to somebody. It is 281-823-7747. Where are my peeps? And by the way, we don't have a limerick today to close out the week from our, our, our poet laureate. Is our poet laureate even here today? I, I'm I'm in the mood to read a limerick. I really am in the mood to read a limerick, and I don't see our poet laureate. Poet laureate, are you here today? If so, may I ask you to just drop a line and say yes? I'm just sneakily listening. Okay, all right. Um, I don't have much more to talk about. So uh, I'm going to ask folks to give me a call, 281-823-7747. Any one of you can get the last calls, 281-823-7747. Am I going to hear from somebody? Not sure, Michael. Those can be manipulated so easily. Are you, well, all right, uh, let, let's go. Let's go. Maybe I'll go ahead and start my ask until somebody calls. So that's what I'll do. Folks, please support the program. Uh, and why should you support the program? Uh, I want to show you, you what the kinds of stuff that we do here. Uh, since nobody's calling, what I'll do is I'll use this time to kind of point out some of the things that we do here. If you go to um, politicsdoneright.com slash info, uh, this, this, is, this is an all be all. Forget about that that stuff that's on top. But if you notice, every one of these icons go to a multi, a, one of the social media platforms or some other platform where we do work. Remember what I said is the purpose of, of Willie's Media LLC Politics Done Right. It's to spread the progressive voice, the voice that most Americans say that they want, the policies that they want. And this is a central location where you can get to every single one of our platforms. So as an example, if you want to see what we're doing on, on uh, the shorts that we do on Instagram, you start at politicsandright.com slash info, and it gets you to all the shorts and clips that we do, right? If you want to get it on... Uh, on uh, what is the other platform? Oops, I, I lost. I apparently let, let me get there again. If you want to see it on, uh, what's the other platform? Let's see, polit What am I doing here? Politics then right. Dot com slash info. If you so you start at politics and right. Dot com slash info. If you want to see what we're doing on uh, TikTok, you go ahead and you see it on TikTok, and you see that we have these. We distribute here on TikToks all these short forms that actually give coverage on the TikTok platform. If you want to see it on YouTube, well, you guys know how to see it on YouTube because many of you are already on YouTube. If you want to see it on uh, Facebook, you know how to do it on Facebook. If you want to see it on LinkedIn, it's also on LinkedIn where we, we, we make sure to hit that platform as well. And you can see all, let's go LinkedIn, you're kind of slow. All the processes, all our stories are there on LinkedIn as well. We also, of course, are on X, which is uh, the formerly Twitter. You can go ahead and see it on Twitter. So this central location takes you to all our platforms that allows you to see 
all the stuff that we're doing and making sure our message goes out. You can get to our podcast, right? Uh, the podcast is right here. And this is where I tell you, this is where most people reside because they can see this through Apple Talk, uh, uh, Spotify. What is it? Apple Talk, Spotify, Google, every, they, they can get our uh, podcast on all these different platforms. And this leads them to all of our podcasts. You can also get to uh, our, of course, our um, Patreon. So all our platforms, all our platforms, you can get to from politicsdoneright.com slash info. You can also figure out how to get our books. You can even see our Pinterest, which is on this platform as well. And there is our Pinterest account where you can see all our stories are also placed on Pinterest for those people who do a lot of clipping. So every platform that you can think of, if you want to know, you know, if you want to see where we publish all the different platforms we publish on, you can go to the www on top there and see that we are published on egbertowillis.com, Substack, Op-Ed News, Medium, Common Dreams, uh, politics on, uh, politics.com, Daily Coast, Alternate, all our stories appear on all these platforms as well. You can click on each one of these platforms to see that we are populating the internet with these things. Additionally, you can go ahead and see the individual mediums, Substack, etc. And then, of course, we always encourage people to please go ahead and get our books. And how do you get our books? You can just click on that as well to purchase our books. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a labor intensive. Tom has a limerick. All right. Tom Zardik has a limerick. Thank you so kindly. I was waiting for my limerick. Yes, I'm here. Tom Zardik. Here we go. Let me make sure that I'm going to get it right first. So bear with me, people. All right. This is Tom Zardik's new S limerick. Oh, no new limerick. So here's one I wrote a while back, kind of depressing, but I'll read it anyway. Here it goes. The world, it seems, is going to hell in a handbasket. Climate's getting hotter. Weather is more extreme. You just can't mask it. Only place on earth I've found where you'll be safe and sound is six feet under, all alone in your very own air-conditioned casket. Oh, my God. That's depressing, Mike. But you know what? Let's 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 not Mike Mike. That's depressing, Mike. I love you, but that's depressing. No, I, all alone in your own very own ear. No, 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 no. This is what we're gonna do, brother, my dear brother Tom Sarnik. I'm gonna end it on a positive note. Tom is giving us the story of what would happen if we get a second Trump administration. I am going to tell you the story of the landslide that I am, uh, the landslide that I'm telling you is going to happen on November, what is it, November, whatever day in November the election is. I am willing that landslide, okay? That's what I'm doing. I am willing that landslide to make sure that Brother Zarnik, right, that Brother Zarnik, Limerick won't be affected. That we don't have to think the only piece we're going to get is in an air conditioned casket. I love it though, brother. You know, I love you, uh, Senor Zarnik. You know, I love you, man. You know, I love you. That was great, Zarnik. That was great, Tom. That was great. That was great. All right. Um, we're coming to the end of the program. So I kind of showed you that if you go to politicsandright.com slash info, you get to all the different platforms that we are seeding with progressive info, with truth telling all around. That's what we're doing. Making sure we do our part to populate the internet with the truth. There are enough lies that purport themselves to be truth. We know we have a whole lot of friends and our, our brothers and sisters, well, mostly brothers in this chat, who are, well, complicit in being, in delivering some of these bad messages, but we love them still. 
and we will continue to engage them. So what I want to ask of you is for you to support, support the program. And the way to support the program is simple. If you have the ability, if you have the ability to say, I want to support, but not only support, I, I, I can afford to support a, pro, a project like this that's doing this much work so that we can get our progressive message out. Go ahead and say, I can support them by subs- being a paid subscriber to their newsletter. Being a paid subscriber to the newsletter. I have crossed 104. I'm at 104. Can we get to 125? Can we get to 125? Can you go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter and subscribe, be a paid subscriber and say, I want to make sure the message gets out there. And I see that you are doing a lot of the work to get it done. It, it's it's a coffee a month. It's that simple. A coffee a month. And if if you go for uh, the one year subscription, if you choose to do that, it's less than a coffee a month. Because this is what allows us to do what we're doing. This is what gives us the ability to do this. And I can tell you, my I I personally change the entire lifestyle of the family to dedicate to activism. And I always give it as, as like, I want my offspring to have a country worth living in. When I went to school, I could afford to work my butt off to get to school. It's much harder for the youth today to go to school and have the kind of life that I was able to build. Hard work. So I gave that up to do this. This is more important. The the collective is much more important than the individual. So I ask you so kindly, become a a a supporter. Today let's let's centralize it on the newsletter. So if you can join the newsletter, become a paid subscriber. Go to politicsdoneright.com/newsletter. I just placed it in the chat again. But I got to get out of here. My name is, first of all, love you all. Thank you all for being here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.